and that is how you take it slice, 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 and that's why it's zero to b. If you put y here, it'll be zero to another variable y, and I don't know where y could be. It could be here, so you wouldn't get the whole of that triangle. That's the way to see it if you can see it. Maybe you have to watch the video again, but you know, so long as you you give it a th bit of thought, and you should get it easily. Expected value of y is going to set go in the same way, but let's just kind of do it since we've got all afternoon. So here we want to do it with respect to x first and just check where does x go. Um, x goes from 0 to a given y. So zero, 0 to y. And then we do respect to y and to the, for the whole support of y at 0 to b. Like so. Notice again the outer integral just has values as limits. Inner integral has mix of a variable and a number. Uh, finally, the expected value of the cross product. All right, so you can kind of fill this in before you watch me do it. Um, x zero to y and y between 0 to b. Good. Alright, so now we know how to set up limits for these things. And it'll be the same if we have uh, three variables, four variables and so on, right? Just we'll have as many integrals as we have variables. Now, not to forget what I said earlier, uh, I want to talk about change of change of integration. So if we go back to the expected value of x here, and what, what I want to do is um, I want to just write down the expected value um, of x. Uh, this is for the, uh, where the second case where limits depend on each other and just scribble down the case where the variable, where the uh, limits do not depend on each other. So y is between 0 to d, x is between 0 and b. Alright, so we've got these two expressions, right? Depending on which case we've got, is it doing this or doing this? Oh, let's put g there, because okay, that g goes with that g, right? Uh, I have to do this, unfortunately, because I don't, I'm not, if I'd put f here, you'd be thinking, some of you being very pedantic would think, oh, he's saying that this function is exactly the same as that function, which may not be the case if, uh, if um, given these numbers here. All right, so I know some of you will have been thinking, when I presented the expressions first, you say, well, look at this thing here. Couldn't I have done x first and then y? In other words, let's call this star and this two star. If we take star, can we not rewrite star as, I want to do integrate x first, then y. So can I not just do, uh, so then switch these two integrals around as well? to kind of match. Can I not do dx first followed by dy? And there'll be good reasons for doing dx first by dy because it could lead to a simpler integral with respect to y is a reason why you might want to change the order. Well this problem we're talking about really is um, changing the order of integration. That's what this is about. Okay, well, you're asking me, is it equal? Is this thing true? Well, suppose I did want to, let's try to get this uh, expression in another way. I want to do integrate this thing, just follow what I did before. Um, I want to integrate respect to x first, then y. So what this tells me here, Remember, the in, x can be between 0 and y. The inner integral, remember, can involve the variable. And then the outer one must be numbers, 0 to b. So we know for sure that this is true because we've kind of, that's from before. Um, well, is this equal to this? Well, look at it. The inner integral here has the numbers, but the outer integral involves a variable. So it means that if you're going to calculate this through, it's going to be a function of x because your answer is going to involve x coming out here because you've got a limit of x, which isn't specified to be a number, it's just left at x. 
I'm not saying it's equal to x, it's a function of x, right, involves x terms. Well then, you know an expected value of a variable is a number. Well, you're not going to get a number out if you've got x on the out, outer one. So in other words, this is wrong. And this is right. So the question is, can I just change the order of integration? The answer is yes. But can you just change the order and at the same time change these two, just swap them around? You can see the answer here is no, because if you swap them around, it's not the same as doing this. Okay, that's a big point there. But how about if we consider a case where, so that case I've just considered is the case where the limits depend on each other. Let's consider a case where they do not depend on each other, like two. So if we, for case two, we swap these two guys around, swap that around, and then we look at this thing and, okay, so let's just do that. So if we swap, just swap these guys around, that's D0, B0, G. Okay, I've just, by swapping. And then we do it the other way, which, a legitimate way. So we look at the limits. I want to do x first and y. x is between 0 and b, so I put 0 and b, and then y between 0 and d. OK, so we put 0 to b, 0 to d. OK, does it match this time? It does. So in other words, what you can see is that if, for the case of uh, where the limits do not depend on each other, you can just swap um, order of integration, and just swap the integrals around, leaving the limits check uh, as they are but if the limits depend on each other if you swap the order of integration you cannot just you cannot just swap those keeping the limits the same all right so what i've done in this video really is to kind of just give you the idea of limits without giving you any examples really um because i know some of you just need this bit and you can get away and do it but if you'd like to see some examples i i have some lined up so i'm gonna do some for you and with some sketches to try to get over this idea here. Alright then, thanks for watching, hope it's been helpful.